Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. All right, I'm back with another video. Uh, I want to give you guys a quick overview of what I use during plowing during my day. And uh, we'll start here on the back with the ice melt. Uh, I use a five gallon Sherwin-Williams bucket. Uh, it keeps it nice and uh, dry in there. And I use a ratchet strap on the far back right to the left up here, just through the holes. It does a great job. Um, I added the brake light in the back in the middle. Um, I like being seen at night and it helps uh, just keep me more seen at night and during the day and just run around. Um, I have a license plate bracket that lights up in the back with LED strips back here. And uh, that really helps with um, the, a, kind of a backup light, a white light. So, uh, and with that ice melt, I carry this sometimes. If it's uh, if I don't need it, I won't take it. Um, but I can refill that and it makes it easier to spread. I usually just spread it with my hands though out of the bucket, five gallon bucket. Um, so going to the red shovel here, This I needed this one for powder days. We got like a foot plus of snow and just being able to throw it is just huge. Um, but the bottom of it did split in half, so I call that one broken, don't use it because there's better ones. So we'll skip that one for now. Go on to the shovel I've been using for a couple years now. Um, this shovel is really great at just getting under the to the concrete and uh scrapes with the metal edge really really nice um the downside of it is it's really heavy and you have to add a hand add a handle to it on to my favorite one so far this season uh, that i just got uh is this white and yellow shovel um, from ace hardware the other two shovels are from uh murdoch's and uh this shovel is just a thick piece of plastic whatever you want to call it um, it's more of a pusher and not like a a thrower shovel like the red one um, but it, it gets to the concrete really really well unless it's really icy um, but by far my favorite shovel of the three I've used and I mostly just carry that one on the front um, I do use these ratchet strap things yeah from Polaris or there's two different brands there's Polaris brand and another brand I use the Polaris one just because it's easier but those ratchet and uh, I like the ratcheting because they're, they're quick and easy and when you Anything that's quicker will save you time, and time is money. So, uh, I use a 509 helmet, best, by far the best uh, helmets on the market. Uh, 509 goggles, fits the helmet. They have a really nice seal with them. Um, I do add this during really, really cold days, um, below zero. But uh, 509, uh, they came out with this last year, I believe. And uh, the chin strap on the bottom is really, really cool. Uh, love 509 but that's just magnetic right there no more straps having to take your gloves off and all that um, all you do is pull it up and it comes off it, it's absolutely just fantastic and i love their helmets love their products um, i wear climb boots climb snow pants uh, north face jacket i don't like climbs jackets because you have to wear a lot of layers under them and north face just comes with two layers three layers under them so uh you can't beat climb boots um they're by far the best boot on the market uh, hands down unless someone wants to send me something and show me otherwise but those are by far the best boots on the market keeping them dry and warm um, with even just one layer of socks on another thing I added was uh, Polaris hand grips they're more for summer I believe but um, they do it just enough in the winter to keep uh, the wind off your hands and your fingers just enough to keep them warmer um, I do have I put uh, I put a thumb warmer on and then hand grip warmers on and uh, behind all Polaris uh, ATVs, they have four cutouts where you can cut the for the switches. And I like the look of the switches um, compared to a lot of other brands. That's why I went with Polaris. And uh, the thumb warmer gets really hot. And the hand warmers could be warmer, but they do the job. Got the plow fixed. So uh, got that pin. It's probably going to be really dark. Sorry about that. But I got that pin taken care of. I'll try to zoom in maybe. Just really dark, but 
Um, I want to give you guys the part number. Um, it's a kit pin, coupler, attach ATV. It comes in a package of the three things you need. You only need the damn pin. You could probably go to Ace or any other hardware store and find one. Um, it's just a hollow pin with uh, a cut on one side of it. Um, but yeah, it comes in a pack, spring, all that assembly. Um, you can slip this little pin through the little hole up here, which we did on another package. But So if you guys need uh, the part number, here it is. MSC13674. Um, that'll give you the pin you need if you break that piece. Uh, they knocked that pin out for me. I could not for the life of me get that damn pin out. Um, so I just had them take care of me. Uh, I think it's H and... I'll have it in the description below, but... H and C or H and L equipment out in Belgrade, Montana. Um, just take care of all our needs on our boss plow. So um, they were nice enough to grease up my center uh, spindle, whatever you want to call it. And uh, what else was there? They checked over my machine, made sure the rub plate was doing well. Checked my uh, my plate down here, and it was actually looking really, really good compared to the 570s in my community. Um, They've been going, let me move the shovel real quick, I'll show you what their issues we're having. They're really beating on their machines or something, so um, they're doing sidewalks and uh, they're eating through the center of that and the outsides aren't eating, but when you're doing a sidewalk and you're in the V, um, the plow really likes to suck down in the middle and you got to get that pressure off by just raising it a little bit. It'll still cut to the concrete, you just got to raise and lift that pressure off of it. Um, that's why they're doing going through so many blades in the bottom at only 150 miles for some reason. Um, I've got almost, I want to say, 350 to 400 miles on this uh, blade down the bottom right here, and it's cutting really, really, really nice. Really pleased with it. Um, so I probably have a blade a year or a blade a season. Um, so, And you don't need the, the, the top little flaps up there. Um, if you're, I'm not a sitting down plowing kind of person I like to stand up and see what I'm what I'm plowing and so you don't need those um, if you're sitting down maybe but I think they're kind of pointless uh, the snow doesn't fly over uh, I had to add some plates on the back because my boss plow was chipping at the whatever panel these, tough panels these are um, so it's chipping right there and I just added some caliper folding stuff they're at the angle the angle a little bit so it kind of just slides up it and eats at this instead of on the wood so hopefully that'll last a lot longer love those and uh so moving on to the inside it needs more tie down points inside i just don't have time to put them in i usually pull my machine in and i use these uh middle ones to strap on the back uh, here's a quick look at the tie down straps in the back crisscrossed you could literally not strap this thing in the back of there and it weighs a thousand pounds and enough to just stay where it is. So if you guys have any questions, uh, hit below. I'm, I'll be happy to answer them. I usually try to answer them as quick as I can and as thorough as I can. Sometimes too thorough, but thanks for watching.